Hi, this is Beata from Splitco Stampers. In this video, I want to show you the basic blending techniques with alcohol-based markers, and I'm going to show you how to use Copic markers in the sample. Before I do that, I will have to tell you a little bit about the color code of each marker. You can find it with the sketch markers and the original on the top, on the caps, and for all markers also on the body of the marker. The first thing is a letter, which is really easy. It stands for the color group that the marker belongs to. R is for red, Y for yellow, G for green, B for blue, and so on. The second one is the first number. It's the hardest to understand, but um, it's, re it's, it's really not that hard. It tells you how much color saturation is in the marker. The lower the number, the purer the color is. Like 0, 1, 2 are really bright reds, bright yellows, bright greens, bright blues. This does not work for grays and for browns, for ease, earth tones, but for the other colors it works. So if you want to color a toy or just a bright image, go with the 0 to 3 numbers and the higher it goes the more gray is in that color and um, the more earthy the colors will get. Now the last number is super easy again. Zero is the lightest color and it goes up to nine which is the darkest. Now when picking markers it's important that you look at the numbers. If you want them to blend well pick markers a light, a medium and dark from the same letter, here it's R24, um, then the same middle number, first number, um, this is R24, R27, and then R29. Pick one that is light, medium, and dark. That will make it easy to buy the right colors and also to make sure that they blend really, really well. Once you master that, you can mix and match like I like to use R39 at the end just to add a little bit more shading. You can also shade with gray tones. Okay, the first cool thing about alcohol-based markers is that you can get a flat or streak-free coloring. To get this, you will start coloring your image quickly in circular motion. And go over it until you have no more lines. If you still have lines or if it looks streaky, that just means your paper is not saturated, go over it again. If you wait until it dry and goes over, go over it like I'm doing now, you will see already some shading because every time it dries and you add more color, you're um, adding another layer which will make it darker. Now that um, the first blending technique is on paper blending. Mo that's what I do most of the time. For that, um, pick three numbers, uh, three markers, like I said before, in one color family, which is our, the, if it's the same letter and the first number, and then a light, medium, dark. So I'm having R24, R27, and R29. Um, when I color, I usually don't go in circles unless I'm coloring um, skin. I'm coloring with a stroke that I call flicking and it looks like that. You start on the bottom and then lift off with your marker and you can see you can already achieve shading just by adding this stroke because on the bottom you hit it harder than on top. That's how I color all my images. Uh, like for this apple, I would start out where I want it to be the darkest. I always start out where I want it to be shaded most. And I flick my lightest color in. Then I go with my medium color. And you can see I don't go all the way. I just go about a half or even a little bit less. And then I go with the darkest color. Or just a little bit so I can make uh, have a definite shade. Then go back over where your darkest color ends and flick over it 
to blend that edge and you can see that edge from the medium to the light you go again over with your lightest color and flick over it like that and then you would do that same from the other side that is the on, the on paper blending and I think I color my images 99% that way for um, let me just show you real quick how I color leaves or even petals. When I start coloring, I don't color the entire image with the lightest color. I just color pieces at a time and I like to leave just a little bit of white at the edge. Go back with my medium, back with my light and where I have this white at the edge, it's just a little bit, I take my colorless blender and I flick in the opposite direction to smooth out so you don't see this latest flick, that, that, that end of your flicking, and it will look like a natural that it bleached out. That is on paper blending. Now, if you have super small areas, you can use the transfer technique. Um, for that, you don't use three markers. If you use the light, medium, dark, and then go back, medium, light, over a small image like that, it will just run out of the line because you have put too much ink on a small area. So um, there are two different ways to do the on paper blending, uh, the transfer technique. You leave the medium out. Here I have YG, yellow, green, six, so it's more earthy, one, and YG, six, seven. So my light and my dark. You can tip your darkest mark, your dark marker, to the tip of the light one and transfer ink. Don't do that with water-based markers, but you can do it with um, alcohol-based markers. So then you do, if you do, let's say I want to do some grass. Okay, a little bit more. Uh, you can um, you can also clean up your marker like this. Use pick up from darker ink from your lighter one where you know you know our markers get dirtier. Pick it up from the plastic there, and then it will fade out. Just use a scrap piece of paper and scribble until you have nothing left from your dark color. The other, I usually don't pick it up from a marker, I don't know, I like to just scribble some on my acrylic block, anything plastic will work, um, and then pick it up directly with the brush tip of my marker, and apply ink like that. And then if you wanted to shade it a little bit more, you can go back with your darker one. You always want to have some definite highlights and some definite um, shaded areas. So don't blend too much, otherwise you blend, you blend, you blend, and then you take a picture and it all looks one color and all that work is for nothing. The third technique is feathering. It's the hardest technique and it takes a little bit of practice. Uh, for that, uh, it's best, feathering is when you blend two colors that are not in the same color group. Here I'm using YG, yellow, green, 01, and aqua blue, blue green, zero one. It is best if you use colors that end the second number with zero, one, or two. The higher the number, the harder it is to blend. This technique is great for butterflies, for wings, for petals. And what you do there is you start with one color. Again, you will need that feathering stroke. And you start from one end of your image and you just flick it over. Okay, and I'm not really careful, so I'm going a little bit out of the line. Then you turn your, well, I can only flick away from me, so I'm turning my image, and I flick the other way. Make sure that they overlap in the middle. You can see they blend a little bit already. So then you go back, and you do it again. And because you're flicking, like that, here will be the, on the beginning of your flicking, will be the darkest area of both inks, and in the middle they will blend together. Just like that. 
And then if you go over the lines like I did, another great thing about the blending tool, no, the blender, blending marker is, colorless blender is that you can push ink back over the line back into your image. For that, it is not an eraser. The ink will just be pushed in a different direction. So I'm scribbling to push my green back into the hummingbird. Another cool thing with the blenderless marker is a uh, colorless blender is to add texture to your images. Just imagine this is green and a dinosaur and you can add scales or you can add bricks in a walkway or in a house. It's really fun. You can also ink up fabric with a, just spray it with a colorless blender um, and then get the te and then press it on to add texture. But that is a whole nother video. I hope this answers some of your question and just it's just practice, practice, practice to get good at coloring with any medium, including alcohol-based markers. See you next time.